So, hi friends. So, we go for uh, May month Yojana, titled Social Security. In that, uh, there are three articles we are going to see. Empowerment of Divyangjan. Okay. And uh, second one is Digital Service Delivery. Third one is Safeguarding Children. So, in that, we go for the first one. So, recently, paragraph 1. So, paragraph 2. Paragraph 3. So, recently a Prime Minister coined the term uh, Divyang Yangjan. So, sorry my pronunciation is wrong. So, it's a Hindi term. So, this relates to persons of disability. So, we call them person of disability or differentially abled. So, this is a uh, term used for the uh, people. Uh, this disability or various categories as we all exposed to that uh, in our childhood days and also in our society, correct? People with special conditions. And uh, recently, our Prime Minister began to give greater focus on uh, people with uh, disabilities. So, this clearly indicates the intention of the government to integrate disadvantaged sections. People with dis disabilities are part of disadvantaged sections in a society. So, our Prime Minister was clear in the objective they should be also part of our development benefits. So, he even termed the uh, term this word to indicate them. It will be with a positive connotation. Okay. So, that is paragraph 1. So, paragraph 2. So, to that uh, supporting to the paragraph 1, what government has taken as an action is they have created this department of paragraph 2. So, government has created this department of empowerment. <coughs> Empowerment of Persons with Disability, which is under Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment. So, Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment. So, this where we can relate us, this topic can be related to our GS paper too, that is Social Justice, where these topics we can relate there. So, one regarding social security is part of the social justice. So, in that they are focusing on this people with disabilities and the second paragraph says government has created a new department or ministry of social justice and empowerment. And the primary objective of this department is to have an outreach program. So, outreach activities. So, government will go in in line with the expectations of the Prime Minister to serve the, the people with disabilities. That's For that, they go for this outreach activities. They go and find the people with differential abilities uh, or disabilities and they try to empower them. That's outreach program and <clears throat> that is done through various policies and programs. So, this is area where we need to be aware of it, where UPC questions can be asked specific on the policies and programs. So, in this coming paragraph, we will see what are this article says about it. So, in paragraph 3, so we have this UN Convention on Rights of Persons, Person with Disability. So, already India has signed a uh, UN Convention. So, it is an international convention where India is a member of it and they have signed this convention saying that our government will provide rights to the person with disabilities. So, that is always a commitment made to the global uh, forum. So, based on that, <coughs> what are the actions taken by the government? So, it was again the year of 2016, the year is given. So, rights of person, so rights of person with disabilities act. So, this was passed in the year of 2016 and this can be a point when you write a question regarding inclusive growth or a question regarding social justice. So, this can be a point you can add. So, by, rough, by the year of 2016, government has created an act especially focusing on differentially able people. So, that is why and their primary objective of this act is to increase or broaden the horizon, horizon of rights and entitlements, rights and entitled, rights and entitlements for the person with disabilities. 
and also safeguarding their rights. Safeguards for protecting their rights. So, the primary objective of this act is to identify what are the rights to be given for persons with disabilities and also how to safeguard them. So, this is the intention of this particular act. So, again paragraph 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So, in paragraph 1, as per the act, what are the provisions being given? So, this is a factual statements which we can use it for your answers to substantiate. So, what they have uh, said is regarding reservation. So, the primary thing what government does is especially for people with uh, disability, they focus on reservation and to empower them. So, reservation should be in two primary areas. So, one is regarding education and job opportunities. So, these are the two areas where under this act some reservation norms are given. So, for uh, uh, educational background that is what it says reservation is increased for 5 percentage with benchmark disability. What is benchmark disability is person having 40 percentage of disability or more that is called benchmark disability. For them there will be a 5 percentage reservation in educational institutions. So, that is one and uh, in government aided higher education that is 4 percentage. So, 4 percentage in government educate, uh, aided uh, institutions and whereas, government jobs especially top level jobs to the clerical level jobs. So, we have this department of personal and training who are implementing this particular uh, reservations for government jobs. So, that is a fact given here. The next thing is uh, unique so disability index so identity so identity so u d i d project so government this is from the year of 2015-16 from the year of 2015 and 16 so government is creating a unique id for people with disabilities so that is the project being done and some facts are given so, it was started in the year of 2017 in Madhya Pradesh and uh, so far 70 lakh UDIDs are provided in 715 districts. So, please understand this is recognizing this people with disability through an ID is one important action of a government which clearly moves the government towards empowerment because first and foremost thing government need to know who are the people with disabilities. For them, they are given an identification which helps the government to make policy decisions and programs. They have the re required data through this identification. So, there is a greater benefit of this identification though it seems to be a simple activity of the government providing an ID. So, with this ID lot of positive things can happen in the life of people with disabilities. So, this can be used as a point for again uh, inclusive growth or uh, social security or to be very specific on people with differential ability. So, all this can be as a point you can use this paragraph 2. The next thing is so paragraph 3. <coughs> so, Prime Minister, so in the year of 2015, he was very specific on uh, uh, Accessible India campaign. Accessible India campaign. One of the biggest challenge for people with disability is they can't come to public life. So, mostly there will be a lot of uh, challenges for them accessing a public places or accessing public transportations. So, all the biggest challenges for people with disability because the infrastructures or uh, the transport mechanisms will not be designed for the people with disability because their numbers are very less. So, any uh, design features will not take that into consideration. To set right that thing, in the year of 2015, our Prime Minister came out with this Accessible India campaign. Even advertisements are made during that time. So, and they have given some factual numbers. It is not mandatory for you to remember all the facts, but I list out some of the important facts which you can use it for your answer writing, which makes your answer very unique. And uh, for uh, they have given examples. Uh, so, one or three central government 
buildings are made accessible and the most important thing is 35 international airports. So, 35 international airports and 55 domestic airports are made accessible for people with disability. What is that accessible aspect is one is ramps so they can easily move and they have this help desk help desk, toilets especially for people with disabilities are being created and right now in India also 709 railway stations. So, railway stations are being accessible for people with uh, disabilities and a lot of other facts are given and another thing is uh, they have given 603 state government, state uh, government and 95 union government websites. So, websites are accessible for people with disabilities. So, this you can put it as a tabular column for any question very specific on uh, differentially able people, what are the measures taken by in India. You can put this uh, uh, accessible India campaign and these are the data given by the government, how they are making the public infrastructures and public places accessible or inclusive for people with disabilities. So, it is a very factual thing, it is not re required to remember all these things which can uh, get the attention of the examiner from mains point of view, this is the airports and railway stations you can quote it down. So, that is given in paragraph uh, uh, 4. Uh, next thing is uh, paragraph 5. So, paragraph uh, 5. So, they also created, ministry also created this Sugamya Bharat app. So, this is an app focusing on crowdsourcing. So, this clearly indicates how government is using the modern technologies for the benefit of uh, a disadvantaged uh, section especially this app is focusing on identifying the problems of differentially able people. So, for that only this app was created especially related to accessibility. So, that is there. The next thing is paragraph 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, in paragraph 1, so under department of empowerment of people with disability, so 14 yearly intervention centers. So, uh, uh, intervention centers are being identified by the government. So, the disability is a progressive one. So, so once uh, family able to identify the disability in early stages, government is ready to help them. So, they have created 14 early intervention centers. So, disabilities can be, the consequence of disability can be minimized because of early intervention. So, that is what government is doing and this department is working on it and there are 14 places are being identified. Location is not required, just uh, have this in mind. And uh, this are more, what the primary activity of these intervention centers are, for it. mostly they focus on, so therapeutic services like speech therapy, occupational therapy, physiotherapy, behavioral therapy. So, all therapeutic things are being done, parental and peer counseling is given. So, ultimately children especially with uh, differential ability or physical disabilities are being make sure that it is not going to impact their rest of the life. So, the consequence of that disability is minimized through this intervention centers. So, that is given in paragraph 1 and 2. So, paragraph 3, so regarding new education policy. 2020. So, already we have made a video out of this new education policy. So, in that new education policy, they are also focus on this uh, education for people with disabilities. So, that is how we can include it. So, barrier free access to education. So, barrier free access to education. So, even new education policy take that into as a factor for designing the policies, especially children with disabilities. So, they are taking that factor into uh, focus and also they are creating this barrier free access to education. And also, right now we have government has created this uh, 
language research and training center so paragraph 4 indian sign <coughs> language research and training center so training center in delhi so they are primarily focusing on uh, disability of deafness so they have developed around 10000 sign languages those are sign languages so this clearly helps the people with uh, deafness to integrate with the society and also interact with others like normal human beings so that is given in paragraph 4 and paragraph 5 and regarding regarding education ncrt syllabus is made accessible people with disabilities so all this being smartphone applications for ncrt ncrt they have the smartphones applications smartphone apps are being created so that people differentially able can e e easily able to read it and also some factual numbers are given say for uh, paragraph 5 again as per world health organization this report you can use it as an introduction for your answers any question on disability so world health organization's report 2019 so 2019 says that one out of four person that is one out of four is impacted by mental illness so mental illness in some part uh, at some part in their lives at some part in their lives so human beings have a greater chance of mental illness in any part of their life it can be in teenagers it can be in mid 30s 40s or 50s and 60s so out of four one will be having these experiences so that is what world health organization reports says and cause for mental illness may be various factors and society's percep perception about mental illness is also one thing which you need to check especially from indian sense is it acceptable or people are not ready to accept people with mental illness all this have an idea which you can as it act uh, uh, uses a point in your answer writing but the fact is given for who global level fact it's not about india and especially after this covid so covid uh, pandemic so covid 19 pandemic has uh, have a greatest impact on mental health impact on mental health It's a normal psychological aspect. We are sitting in a home for uh, two years without interacting with others, and also financial issues. All this pile up and results in mental problems. So that is what fact is given here regarding COVID, and they have given this uh, uh, government initiative how to support that. So that is given paragraph five. <coughs> so that is twenty-four bar seven. Toll-free rehabilitation. Toll-free mental health rehabilitation so this initiative of the government which is also part of uh, disability okay <coughs> helpline so paragraph 1 paragraph 2 3 and 4 so in paragraph 1 and again person with disabilities have great potential in sports also so they can be a major uh, a contributor in sports also, also that is given here and uh, even they have put 19 medals which includes 5 gold in Tokyo 2020 <coughs> Para Olympics so this is a fact so please understand government is also focusing on people disabilities in sports arena this you take it as a lead for preparing your prelims any any information you get people with disability achieving in sports arena at global level that can also be a prelims question especially if it's a women personality please go and check which uh, sports they are and uh, what medal they have won so sometimes UPSC can ask questions on that especially from prelims point of view so this point clearly indicates that people with disabilities have a biggest contribution in sports arena so they have given some facts for it and also government has created center for disability sports at Gwalior so state of art facilities to train people with uh, disability for sports and paragraph 2 paragraph 2 uh, again the department of uh, empowerment and 
for person with disabilities created a platform or we can put as government creating a platform divya kala shakti so this is regarding fine arts so people with differential ability contributing to fine arts they are put under this platform of divya kala shakti so these are some informations when you write an answer if you quote it which fetches you the extra marks especially in mains <coughs> and paragraph 3 so right now under make in india so make in india initiative so government along with government as artificial limb manufacturing cooperation of india with manufacturers autobook germany so is a joint venture between these two companies uh, they are focusing on developing a product for so this is a medical condition especially related to mobility so for that uh, these two companies one is indian company and another is a german company so both are uh, working together uh, to develop a solution this comes under make in india even this point can be used in your answers for manufacturing sometimes a question is asked how make in india program can help a society most of the time as a candidate we write about uh, foreign exchange reserves we can write about job opportunities how it creating enhances export import all this we can write even this can be one point how make in india can help disadvantaged sections in india so this example you can write it there so make in india uh, our next thing is last one paragraph 4 and also so we have this deen dayal disabled rehabilitation scheme where supporting ngos to run projects for special educations again the ministry is work, uh, having this deen dayal disabled rehabilitation scheme especially to help ngos to focus on people with dis disabilities so you can based on this news article based on this uh, yojana article we get a good perspective government is working in various platforms to make sure that people with disabilities part of our development process and also enjoying the benefits of development starting with creating an app or uh, providing opportunity in sports or uh, uh ka uh, knowing their problems giving an id so all these points you can write it structure the answers in such a way that this clearly indicates to the examiner so government has taken multiple steps to add them in development process so next news article is safeguarding children so paragraph 1 so paragraph 2 so paragraph 3 so in paragraph 1 some facts are given regarding india's population and children's this facts you can use it for your answer writing as introductions so 0 to 6 years in india we have around 158 million and 472 million in the age group of 18 so up to 18 years and please understand this numbers we are able not able to remember all these things just to understand the uh, figure value factual value of children in india we have get a perspective so what is the uh, uh, chil uh, how many children are there in india but this another fact which is given as 39 percentage of country's population so this you can use it in your answers which is easy to remember out of 100 people 39 people are considered to be the children in india so up to the age of 18 39 percentage of indian population is there so this fact you can use it in your answer writing this is not possible just to understand the impact of this uh, statement we can know it so this 39 percentage use it in your answers wherever possible and in that they also said that around 30 million out of all the children 30 million are considered to be orphaned or abandoned children urban and children so around 4 percentage of youth population in india 
So 1 million means 10 lakh. If you calculate then to 30, you can get an understanding. So around 4 percentage of youth population is orphaned or abandoned children. There may be many reasons why this happens for a child. A recent example, if we take this pandemic situation, there are news stories which says that both father and mother died in pandemic and children are left alone. So this may be a reason for uh, orphan children, correct? Or uh, abandoned children can be uh, any any other reasons. It can be from uh, uh, f uh, from social uh, cultural dimensions or it can be a crime all this happens so uh, f another important fact is 4 percentage of Indian youth population is considered to be orphaned or abandoned okay these are the facts which you use it for answer writing based on the questions being asked so in paragraph 2 so UNICEF this is again a global organization UNICEF so in India in India <coughs> They have given a number called so 29.6 million that is given as 30 million in above uh, uh, paragraph and uh, whereas 2017 as per date of 2017 out of this abundant children 4,70,000 children are in institutionalized care. Please understand. So, out of 30 million, only around 0.4 million are under institutionalized care, where government able to identify them, took them under their wings, providing all the basic necessity for their children's growth, only 0.4 million, around 30 million, only 0.4 million are institutionalized care. So, this clearly shows what biggest problem India is facing, especially regarding abundant children. Okay. So, so, this fact you can clearly understand that. And uh, another uh, aspect is again this abundant children's one problem is from government side they, they are not able to give them the required uh, uh, safeguards to institutional care even under institutional care government can't take them for long time correct so ultimately another mechanism is called adoption so and again one of the biggest problem in uh, children's without parents adoption rate in a society is also very low low adoption rate. So, we have this, seen the twin problem. One day numbers are 30 million but only 0.4 million are under institutional care mostly by government and NGOs and even in that adoption rates are very low. So, in Indian culture they are not ready to accept uh, a child which is born outside. So, as they are son or daughter that is cultural problem in India. So, all this has a unique challenge for this children. That is what the point says. So, in paragraph 3, so right now in India we have this CARA, Central Adoption Resource Authority. So, there is an organization responsible for adoption in India, Central Adoption Resource Authority. So, Resource Authority, so they have given the data for 2017 and 18. So, around so, 3276, these numbers are not important, approximate you can write. So, that is around 0.87 percentage. Only 0.87 percentage uh, children are adopted in India. So, we know the primary data is around 30 million children are abandoned or orphaned. In that only 3000 children are being adopted. So, only 0.8 percentage children are adopted in India. So, they have a proper uh, uh, family environment for them to grow, opportunities are available for them. So, majority majority of the children abandoned, their fate is always very pathetic. One is government cannot help them because institutional support is very less and also society wise people perception about adoption is less. So, ultimately it becomes a biggest challenge for the system. So, based on the facts, these are the things what we can infer. The next thing is, uh, so we go for next, so paragraph 1, paragraph 2, paragraph 3 and paragraph 4. So, in paragraph 1, so another uh, problem in India is there are around 29,000 parents are ready for adoption. So, 29,000 couples are ready for adoption. But the number of uh, children's available is 3,000. 
So, 3000 children are adopted. This clearly shows that even in a society which is culturally not ready to uh, adopt, still there are certain chunk of population ready to adopt them. And But the adoption is very less. We need to find the reason why. The very biggest problem is rules which is very tedious and which is time consuming and very strict. So, ultimately cause a lot of delay and after a point of time parents go, lost the hope of adoption and the pro because of the process of their bad experience also they leave out the uh, option of adoption. So, all these are uh, challenges in India that is what given in paragraph 1 and paragraph 2. So, they also said that uh, there are some challenges why this happens very low. So, first and foremost thing is uh, institutional care, low institutional care. So, lot of abandoned children never reaches the institution where they can be adopted that is the first reason they are given and uh, we, we have an uh, uh, authority for this the district child protection officer whose primary task is to identify these abandoned children and try to get them in institutions. So, stay taking street children to child care institutions. So, that that uh, officers are responsible in the Indian system, we have a officer to take care of that. Still, we can see from the numbers it is not being properly done. So, that is another reason and also as per next data that is national commission for protection of child rights and once this uh, district officer responsible for children's identify a child they need to take their take for child care institutions. So, but as per this N uh, NCPCR, so it is a national commission. So, in India we have around 8550 registered child care institutions, but there are this all registered one. When you take unregistered one also, it stretches to 8000 CCIs. Unregisters are not part of government system, they not get integrated government, but they privately run. So, in India, uh, we have around 8000 child care institutions, but register is 5850. To the strength of total abundant children, these are very microscopic. So, that is what the data indicates here. On paragraph 3, and another uh, important factor of this adoption is around only 1 percentage of children adopted or with disabilities. So, what we need to understand here is we I will just say the facts right from the first 30 million children are abandoned or orphaned in that 30 million only 3000 are getting adopted that is 0.87. Even in 3000 only 1 percentage of that 3000 comes under children with disability. So, which clearly shows that in this entire set of children's orphan, children's with disability is going to pay the heavy price because already adoption in Indian culture is not acceptable and adopting a children with disability is highly impossible. No, no family or uh, no couple is ready to do that. So, that is what the data says and uh, so they have given the reason that is given in paragraph 4 why it never happens is cultural aversion. This term you can use it in your answer writing. So, cultural aversion. So, cultural aversion towards the children with special needs and in paragraph 4 again they said what is this care as central adoption resource authority which was uh, central adoption resource authority which comes under ministry of women and child development. So, responsible for adoption in India. So, so that is given here. So, paragraph 1 and paragraph 2. So, in paragraph 1. So, in year of 2018. So, there were some changes in this rules of this central adoption resource authority where children can be adopted by individuals in living relationship also. So, previously it was married couples right now 
they have changed the rule saying that even living relationship they can adopt children so that is the most important which clearly indicates our society is changing and government is ready to accept the changes and uh, india and outside of india also so so this is what the uh, paragraph says and also what are the laws of adoption as one as hindu adoption and maintenance act juvenile justice act juvenile justice act so these are the two acts when you write an answer regarding adoption your answer uh, in your mains you can also refer this one there is an institution called cara c a r a and also we have this law hindu adopt adoption and maintenance act and juvenile justice act so these are the things which is mainly responsible for determining adoption in india so these are some informations for your enhancing your answers so that is in paragraph 1 so in paragraph 2 so so ministry of women and child development is implementing the centrally sponsored centrally sponsored child protection services child protection services previously it is called integrated child protection scheme especially from different circumstances difficult circumstances so already actions are taken by the government especially by the ministry of women and child development so child protection scheme so this is uh, given in paragraph 2 and next we go for paragraph 1 2 Three, four, five, and six. So, in paragraph one, so in this child protection uh, services, so ga central government, that is union government, is providing financial assistance. So, financial assistance for states and union territories, states and union territories. for situation analysis so they can go and study why the children are in that particular circumstances why they are in that uh, uh, why they are having the problems what hap- what happens to them all this can be studied to situation analysis where central government is giving money to the state governments financial aid to do a research on their problems so ultimately government can create some schemes and programs and policies for them So that is all part of this child protection scheme, and also uh, in paragraph two, it also given that uh, maintenance grant. So maintenance grant is provided for uh, uh, childrens in the homes. That is child care institutions. So that amount was increased from seven fifty to two thousand. per child per month this is a huge jump where government has spent lot of money for this from 750 rupees they have said that in this care, uh, child care institutions they are ready to give 2000 per child per month this is a huge uh, financial aid for the uh, uh, children especially orphan and abandoned the next thing is paragraph 3 so what they found out as the national commission for protection of child rights so out of this 2874 children's homes so 54 only 54 was able to comply with juvenile justice act so this act says certain condition how to run a children's home basically it can be a facility for their uh, development there should be some facility for nutrition and uh, some play area all need to be there so all provided juvenile justice act but only out of this 288 800 uh, children homes only 54 have the all the norms satisfied which clearly no clearly indicates that even the children homes they are not taking care of the children properly so that is what we need to understand from this the next thing is uh, so there are three major schemes on which women are uh, sorry children are taken care so this that is given in paragraph 4 uh, so that is three major schemes three schemes so so umbrella schemes 
So, one is uh, mission Vatsalya, mission Poshan 2.0. Mission Shakti. So, all this focus on children's also. So, in this uh, mission uh, Vatsalya, so policy makers assume that children's are the supreme assets of the nation and they began to give greater focus on converging various government policies and programs and various departments for children well-being. So, that is the primary focus on it. It is a mission which says that all government departments and pro, uh, 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 ministries, programs and policies should integrate in the objective making sure that children is the supreme asset of a nation. So, that is there and mission portion 2.0 especially focusing on children, targeting on girl child and also children in the uh, especially in school, school, uh, school ages in uh, girl, girl child focusing on malnutrition all those things that is mission portion it's a common program in that there is a program there is a subset focusing on children and women and mission shakti it's a citizen centric uh, supports for women especially re rehabilitation empowerment uh, so that is where it's focus on so that is in mission shakti so this again paragraph 1 so 2 3 and 4 so, in that there are two uh, subsets in uh, Mission Shakti, correct? Sambal and Samartya. So, these are uh, while writing answer, it does not mean that to go for even subsect level, just know that these are the schemes there in uh, uh, India, especially focusing on women. Beti Bacha, Beti Padao, one stop center for uh, women helpline, all being given. And also focusing on in paragraph 2. So, uh, so it's uh, this this scheme. Sorry. So, Martia, we are especially focusing on uh, working women, national creech scheme for children and working mothers. So, all these are part of this. Especially focusing on uh, women who is part of economic activity. All are taken care under this scheme. So, that is given paragraph three. And paragraph 4, uh, so, so paragraph 3, sorry, paragraph 3, we have this PM CARE. So, this was a fund created by union uh, government during this corona pandemic situation in this PM CARE funds. So, there is allocation for children whose parents died due, due to the pandemic, so that is what given here. So, they are going to fund the children and they have given some financial numbers for it, so monthly stipend. up to age of 18 years, up to age of 18 years there will be monthly siphon given and uh, rupees 10 lakh at the age of 23. So, those children who lost the parents for the pandemic, so these are the under PM CARES, government is providing all these benefits, all financial helps. Okay. <coughs> So, these are the things regarding uh, and also paragraph 4, uh, we have this uh, Pradhan Mandri Jan Arogi Yojana, 5 lakhs for uh, per family, right? So, insurance cover of 5 lakhs, rupees 5 lakhs per family, focusing on secondary and tertiary care hospitalization. If you want to put in our layman terms what we called as uh, specialty, super specialty hospitals. So, our government says that they are giving a cover of 5 lakhs per family under this uh, Yojana. So, so these are the things regarding this news, this Yojana article. Next, we go for digital service delivery, the third one. So, paragraph 1, paragraph 2. So, in paragraph 1, so, regarding this ICT information and communication technology and what are the primary aim of this technology especially in government services it is given inclusive, affordable, transformative, transformative and accessible. 
So these are the keywords whenever you want to write an answers on uh, information and communication technology, any questions on e-governance or any question regarding technology in our public services. These are some of the keywords which you can put it in your answers. This is a very positive impact of uh, technology in public services. Okay, And they have given some uh, examples. So government initiatives. In this direction, what are the government initiatives? Some of the government initiatives, one is Digital India. So Digital India and uh, direct benefit transfer and government e-marketplace. So these are some of the initiatives uh, resulting in so knowledge based economy and also digitally empowered economy. So digitally empowered economy. So these are some of the benefits of this and they have given some facts. So uh, regarding digital divide. So digital divide is, re is related to use of technology. The name itself is divide based on use of technology. So digital divide is decreasing in India as per the article is decreasing in India and they have even said that uh, 7 out of 10 states with fastest growing internet subscribers have per capita GDP lower than India's average. So which clearly indicates that stored the states without the GDP contribution, states which has a lower GDP contribution to the economy where penetration of technology is very high. This clearly indicates that so India is move, moving towards knowledge economy because penetration of uh, technology is going even in the states where economic contribution is less. Probably this may be a force multiplier for economy because of penetration of technology later these states can contribute for our national development. That is one and even they have given uh, uh, UP as an example which has 36 million internet subscribers and uh, 12 percentage of India's total incremental internet subscriptions. So whenever there is internet subscription increasing, the numbers are mainly contributed by UP. And uh, 8 out of 10 top 10 states, this is another important fact, 8 of 10 states Gram Panchayat is covered under Common Service Center. So Common Service Center, so Common Service Center is an institutional mechanism especially at the village level to penetrate the ICT technologies especially to provide public services and you all sometimes private services also included majorly concerned public services. This common service center is a uh, institutional mechanism to make people especially at the lowest level at village level to get the benefits of technology. So this fact says that 8 out of 10 states especially top 10 states 8 as most of the Gram Panjath have this common service centers. So this clearly indicates that India is moving in the right direction of using technology especially ICT. The next thing is uh, paragraph 2 which speaks about Pradhan Mandri, Jandan Yojana. So it is uh, regarding financial inclusion. What the primary objective is making all Indians to open a bank account. So that is the primary uh, objective and also based on this uh, financial inclusion right now we can see lot of fintech apps are being created ultimately benefiting the common man. That is right now we have this BIM app, UPI. UPI is being created. So, and as per this National Payment Corporation of India until March 2022, until March 2022, so we have this UPI Unified Payment Interface has 5 billion transactions, which value is around 8 trillion. So this is the value of money transacted through UPI which clearly shows that our economy is moving towards digital economy and our government's primary focus is make digital economy because it has a huge contribution for our development. Even our Prime Minister thinks that uh, the objective of taking our economy from 2 trillion to 5 trillion, digital economy play a major role and these are some facts clearly indicates that India is moving in that direction. If any question regarding digital economy in, or any question regarding realizing the Prime Minister's dream of, five, uh, dream of 5 trillion economy these points can be added. So paragraph 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So in paragraph 1, so as we are moving towards uh, digital economy and all, so we have a scheme. So Pratan Mantri Gram and Digital Shaksada Abhiyan and this primarily focus on digital literacy. 
So, so this is a, this is a scheme created in India, especially to promote digital literacy among the people, so that they can effectively use the technology. Again, we relate with digital divide to minimize the digital divide. We have this, and they have given some facts for it. Uh, around six, uh, uh, this primary objective is to reach six crore rural households. So, so they want to reach to the rural households rural households that is given in paragraph 1 and paragraph 2. So, this fact in paragraph 2 you can use it for your uh, answer writing especially regarding this uh, cash benefit direct benefit transfers. So, in direct benefit transfers around 36,000 crore is being directly transferred to the bank accounts. So, bank accounts and uh, which comes under public finance management system and this reaches to the beneficiaries and this fact is more important because this fact clearly indicates that government has used the technology very effectively to deliver the services and to deliver the financial resources to the people who are the real beneficiaries because of DBT there are a lot of benefits to the system one is expenditure is reduced a lot corruption is reduced a lot and also duplication is not there because they are able to identify the real beneficiaries. This is all part, uh, part of this uh, DBT, direct best benefit transfer. If you combine with Aadhaar, you can easily identify how it is feasible. This factual information, please use it wherever possible. Anything regarding control of corruption, any questions regarding control of corruption or any question regarding use of technology for public services, this is a very good fact which you can use it for your main sensor writing. The next thing is uh, paragraph 3. And uh, so, some facts are given over 2 trillion Aadhaar enabled payment systems last year being done. And apart from this, in paragraph 4, we have this uh, uh, Digital India Initiative for Ashman Bharat, that is Ashman Bharat Digital Mission. And primary focus is digital health repository for Indians. So, this clearly no, uh, indicates that under this Ashman Bharat digital emission, government want to create a digital record of uh, health data of Indians. So, ultimately this is benefit to uh, Indian. Anywhere in India they can enjoy the public health services. That is a great benefit here and also telemedicine during pandemic all possible because of technology effectively used in public services. So, that is given in a uh, uh, paragraph and also they have given uh, e Sanjeevani portal regarding telemedicine you can relate that remote consultation have been provided through this portal. So, these are examples or keywords in your answers. And also we have this in paragraph 5 that is mental health counselling again possibility of technology is being used here under national tele, uh, tele mental health program national tele mental health program so they have given this mental health counselling so again use of technology in this paragraph 1 2 3 so, in paragraph 1, e-health, use of uh, technology for providing health. So, what are the greatest benefit is uh, evidence-based treatment, evidence-based treatment and empowering patients. So, these are the benefits based on this e-health because everything is in electronic format and documents are being there. So, transparencies are created. So, all this have a positive impact on uh, patient and also for the health infrastructures and systems. And uh, next one is, uh, so this is what this uh, in paragraph 2 they say about what is this common service interest, especially at the village level they provide both public and private services that is what already I said in the previous point. That is paragraph 3. We have this Umang mobile application 
expansionist unified mobile application for new age governance so this is a app where you can download it and enjoy all different government services and the number is around 2039 services which includes union government and state government ministries and departments so this single app you can get most of the government services so that is again possible through technology and the umang app they have given some examples mara ration so uh, to identify the nearest fair price shops and enam mandi near me uh, damni lighting alerts so these are some of the examples given so what are the benefits of this particular umang app that is in paragraph 4 so paragraph 1 2 3 4 so again in paragraph 1 there also spoke about digilocker which is also part of this uh, technology based initiative the name says digilocker where you can convert all your physical copy documents government documents into uh, soft copies there's a little greater benefit so you doesn't need to carry them wherever you want you can use it so all benefits are there that is given in paragraph 1 so paragraph 2 it speaks about the technology that is kisan drones So drone technology is also used especially for benefiting the farmers technology driven agriculture. So moving tech agriculture towards technology technology driven agriculture. And uh, the reason why technology is being integrated is around 50% of Indian population depend on technologies. So out of 100 people around 58 people are entirely depend upon agriculture. So technology should be infused so that increasing in productivity and better outcome can be enjoyed so they are given this uh, kisan drone this you can use it in your answer writing and uh, especially these are used to get the quality outputs and regular checks can be done so that is given paragraph 2 and paragraph 3 for skilling for skilling and livelihood this initiatives there in india they stack so for skilling for uh, uh, individuals these are being used and this may pro primarily focusing on digitally empowering the citizens so there is another initiative ultimately paragraph 4 so by year of 2025 so digital transformation in india is going to have a greatest impact so digital transformation digital transformation increasing the economic value and also digital services innovations and this last one artificial intelligence blockchain drones robotics all this can be a science and technology question in your prelims although it can also it can be a mains question for example use of drones in uh, agriculture use of robotics in uh, disaster management they try to integrate this type of topics to ask the question you have you should have a very basic uh, idea about all this uh, terms for prelims angle artificial intelligence blockchain robotics and ultimately by 2025 india is moving towards digital transformation it has a huge benefit for the system so these are the three uh, news uh, yojana articles so we have a question of uh, 2020 so the questions is regarding this uh, based on the articles what we saw last three articles we can add few points at least one or two points for this question the question is regarding intra generational and inter generational issues of equity from inclusive growth and sustainable development so keywords are intra generational and inter generational intra generational within the same generation inter generational is for example it can be a uh, uh, father and son grandparent and uh, grandson this inter generational so that is in inclusive growth issue of equity from the perspective of inclusive growth is that inclusive growth is happening among this section of population so based on the news uh, based on the yojana article what we saw one is regarding disability we can see that disability intra generational is also there inter generational is also there so disability can be uh, spoken and also children especially abandoned children or orphan children this can be a paragraph in your answer so so what are the issues of equity so why why that is not happening so we can take example of children which is orphaned so we can say about cultural norms why uh, they are not being part of our family system or government why is what is the problem there that you can write as a point there 
Similarly, when you go for the uh, differentially abled, so right now government has created all the mechanisms, but problem for them, rights are not being there and also they are not being recognized. So government doesn't know how many people are there. So all this can be a point. It can be one paragraph how intergenerational, intergenerational equity is missing or issues in equity for inclusive growth. Okay, okay thank you.